Hey guys, Nathan at Duck River Hunting coming to you from the buckwheat plot that you've seen in a recent video. And I've got a guest today. This is my Aunt Kay. Who, Hello. She is a much more experienced, much bigger YouTuber than I am. She has a channel, Kay Kittrell Late Bloomer. And she saw that we had honey available for sale and wanted to reserve some. And I told her that she should come down and see where it comes from. <laughs> So that's what we're doing today. We're touring the farm and I'm going to dive into a nucleus colony with her and it'll be the first time that she sees the inside of a beehive. So I'm very excited about that. I'm gonna try to make it a good experience for her. Uh, I'll do my best on that. So, <laughs> Kay, what do you think about it? Are you excited? I am totally excited. I, I, I've never been in a bee suit. There was a swarm, I didn't tell you this, but there was a swarm in my late bloomer garden uh, about two years ago, mm -hmm. back in California, and I had to have a, a removal, safe removal company come in, and they vacuumed up everything, and yeah. it was in the work tool shed, underneath <laughs> the tool shed, so they had to cut a hole in the floor, and it was really, it was really interesting, you know. Yeah. But what happened is they didn't get them all, and then they came back, yeah. and so that's kind of my whole experience other than just seeing lots of bees in my California garden. I haven't had very many honeybees in my Tennessee place. I see the uh, bumblebees yeah. all the time. That's what's pollinating everything. Yeah, they're actually a better pollinator than honeybees are. I think one, one native bee or bumblebee uh, can do the pollination of about a hundred honeybees. What? Yeah. Wow, but they don't make honey. They don't make honey. Oh, okay, there's that. Yeah. <laughs> uh, well, I'm excited. Let's get going. Yep, we'll get to it. All right. Do you, do you have this located by the water for, um, because bees drink a lot of water? Well, there's several reasons for that. Uh, I've got the pond in front because I don't need to mow that or bush hog it. Uh -huh. I have fish in that pond, so typically the dead bees, the housekeeping bees, will grab a dead bee in the hive, fly out in front of the hive, and drop it. Uh -huh. So if they drop those dead bees in the water, then my bluegill are eating them. Oh, that's good. That constant source of food. Uh -huh. Big reason is I don't have to bush hog in front of there. Where my hives were before, I've got the bush hog in front of that, and in that's the summertime, the bees are kind of angry. I would think. They don't like that. No. So, but yes, it um, having water really close is good because they use water uh, they actually have water bearers mm -hmm. and uh, they'll bring water into the hive and cover the comb with that mm -hmm. and then they'll blast air through the hive circulate it and they get convective cooling just like air conditioning wow oh. well i didn't realize i was standing right beside yeah you're right in front of the entrance you've got a you're not you've got to... a traffic jam of bees behind you, 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 that, you that are lost they can't find their you're house you're not supposed to stand in the flight path are you <laughs> Uh, I guess you have to if you come to inspect the bees. I usually work hives from the back, but this is actually two hives. I split this one with a double screen board, so I got a starter colony on top and a starter colony on the bottom, okay. and they're facing different directions. Okay, where should I stand so that you can do your You're job? fine right there. Okay. We're just going to work them oh from the God, side here. The bees behind me. They're going, this yeah. big person's in the way. They get lost. Oh my goodness. They get lost. It seems like I should stand over here. Well, you tell me what to do. <laughs> You're fine. You're fine. All I'm going to do is look. I don't have a job, right? No. I'm very calm. <laughs> I, I see how calm you are. I am calm. Don't you think I'm calm? Oh, you're so calm. I seem calm. I mean, you're in a zen place. I think I am. You could be teaching meditation right now. You're so calm. I think I am. Because I'm protected. All right, first things first, that's a good population. Okay. Give them a touch of smoke here, they're calm. That's a good sign. They shouldn't have any feed. I've not fed them in a long time. But they are starting to draw these frames out and fill them with nectar, so... Can I stand closer to yeah. see? Yeah, okay. One, two, three, four. It looks like they're working on five of eight frames up here. So I usually pull the second to the outside frame. But I can tell that these are empty, so I'm just going to jump in and grab the outside. Okay. Boy, they're really loud when you get closer, huh? Mm-hmm. 
Yeah, they're roaring a little bit. Uh, yeah, they started, right? Mm-hmm. I didn't hear that at first. Oh, I expected that to be much longer. Are there two of those top and bottom? Yeah, I've got two boxes on here for this, oh, well, for this high. Right, right. And they just sort of stick, the honey kind of sticks them together. That's not honey, that's propolis. Right, right, right. So propolis is a... Is it a byproduct? It, they actually go and collect tree resin and chew it up and turn it into propolis. It is sticky. Right. It's antimicrobial. Supposed to have a lot of health benefits, so That's you can scrape some of this out of here and, and chew on it later if you want to, just like a ill flavored chewing gum. Okay, I'll do that. <laughs> You'll scrape it, I'll chew it. Okay. What happens when the queen has boys? Well, this is sleep? this is where they get interesting. So think of a think of a hive like an apple. Okay. Um, how does an apple tree reproduce? Uh, well, it has seeds. In apples. In, in the apple. But yeah. how else can it reproduce? Uh, well... <laughs> Pollen. Uh, yes. So, apple trees make billions of pollen grains. Okay. And they make very few apples. That's true. So, for this hive, the way it reproduces is through a reproductive swarm. Mm -hmm. That's like the apple. Mm -hmm. Drones, drone bees, are like pollen grains. Mm -hmm. They make a lot of drones that have very little chance of going out and mating with a queen, mm -hmm. but they make so many of them, and they're so low cost to make, mm -hmm. that they've got a pretty decent chance of expressing their genetics into the population by making those drones. Mm -hmm. But drone bees, uh, the queens can actually decide whether to lay a fertilized egg oh my goodness really or an unfertilized egg and drones are come from unfertilized eggs well how is that possible she keeps semen in her ovipositor oh my goodness she goes out on a series of mating flights and then never goes out again unless she swarms. I knew that. I knew this that. is a honey frame that they have drawn that's probably buckwheat honey that whole thing is capped, right? Almost? Yeah. The whole thing is capped? Yeah, that whole thing is capped. That's wow. a beautiful frame. Wow. They've drawn that out. It's got some nectar on the sides. It's actually dripping out. So, all, Are they all that calm just from that little bit of smoke you did? Well, they've got work to do. Well, that's true. They've and, got a job. Yeah, bees that work, that have a nectar flow, are generally pretty calm. Easy to get along with. And these guys are small. And which, which ones are not calm? The big ones big hives. Oh. Big hives with lots of workers are generally much more defensive. They really got that glued. Now you heard that I just banged those boxes together. That is they something that the bees do not like. I was just gonna say they sounded angrier. Yeah, they don't like banging noises. Well, who would, really, think about it? Who does? Sometime when you're harvesting, honey, I'll have to come back, because that's yeah. a whole different thing. Yeah, it's a lot of work, so I'd love to have some help. <laughs> well, I, I don't know if I could be much help, since I don't know what I'm doing. Partially drawn frame. So the honeycomb is just, it, it starts on that black uh, mm -hmm. mesh, Foundation. and it builds up. Yep. With the same... They, they build it out with with, in that shape. pattern. In that pattern. That's... And not only that, but if you look, it's angled upward. That way when they put nectar in there, it doesn't fall out. Oh, good heavens. How brilliant. God thought of everything, didn't he? Yep. <laughs> There's a lot of God things about bees. I would They're think so. They're just absolutely amazing. I mean, just think about what you just said about, okay, this queen goes out and goes, okay, I don't need semen for this because I'm just making a boy. Is that what you said? Yeah. <laughs> it's, it goes far deeper than that. The, the so, queens go out to find drones. How do they find drones? <laughs> well, all the drones go to drone congregation areas and fly around waiting on queens, and the queens go and find those drone congregation areas. Amazing. How do they know where to go? Well, are they within a certain number of miles? Yeah, the drones typically, studies I've seen, the drones would typically go a quarter mile to 
maybe a mile away and the queens will fly a mile to you know even farther to find them to find drones and that helps prevent interbreeding do you have a queen in each one of these boxes yes okay. without not in each one of the boxes in each one of the hives so this is a hive this is a hive this down here is a separate hive they're not connected okay i see what you mean these two I boxes just, were connected so yeah. that's a hive that's a hive got they've it. got a bottom board a top lid a queen got it. workers okay they should have some brood in here that was that was brood comb but they're back filling it with nectar there's some pollen in there see the yellow stuff in there in there nope mm -hmm. it's up in here and there's a bee with pollen on its legs oh. you see the yellow on its legs there yeah mm -hmm. So you can, you're happy so far. Yeah. You, not, you, have you can look and see. Problems. See, they didn't like that. No, I, they sound angry. You can really tell the difference, can't you? Yeah. In the sound. Fast movements, waving your hand across the top bars. They don't really like that. Mm -hmm. So when you do a hive inspection, you have to take out each panel? You don't have to. That's um, a good idea. I'm, I'm mostly checking for stores and queen right right now. You see, here's brood. What? That's kept brood. See the difference in the colors of the cells? That's a tan. There's a baby bee being born right there. Where? 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 Did it chewing out? Oh my goodness. There's another one right there and a third one. I hope the camera can see that. I'm going to get my other camera and make sure that we can. That was really cool. I just got super macro footage of a bee emerging. Wow. Never seen that before. So we have got very young larvae down in there. You can see the little curly cues, little white things. Mm -hmm. Those are larvae. Mm -hmm. In the hole? Mm-hmm. Okay. So she's already been in here to lay. Were you fascinated with bees growing up? In the I didn't know anything about bees <laughs> until I got bees. Wow. I didn't know anything about them. You're a fast learner. I um, decided that it would be a neat way to get back into agriculture since we haven't had cattle in many years. And mm -hmm. Cattle are just hard to get into. They, they're expensive to get into and beekeeping is not, I mean, it's it can be pretty pricey, but uh, not like getting into cattle. No. So I thought that it would be a good way to do that. And I just love wildlife and finding pollinators and stuff. So I decided to try it mm -hmm. and just fell in love with it. That's awesome. It's just fascinating. We've got pollen and a little bit of brood over here. Not likely we're gonna see the queen on this frame. Aw. So I bet that we have missed her. Yep. And they are roaring at me. Yeah, I was just going to say. So I'll give them a touch of smoke and then we'll get them put back together. Okay. I think I'm going to give them a treat for their trouble. Okay. They've been very gracious hosts. 
So I'll give them a little bit of sugar syrup. My goal with this nuke is to send them into winter in a double medium that's completely drawn out mm -hmm. with the top box full of honey. Oh. 10 full frames drawn out full of honey. Mm -hmm. So if they get these eight frames drawn out, I'll pull the feeder out and drop a couple of drawn frames in mm -hmm. and then let them go into the fall flow and fill up the box and just get it ready for winter. And then next spring, uh, they should be ready to make honey. And in general, what are they doing over winter because there are no flowers? They cluster. Uh -huh. They form a ball and oh. conserve heat Oh. and stay in the hive. They're awake all winter. That's oh why they need so much food. When will you actually collect the honey again? I won't. Not off of them. Oh. Is there a different hive that you will before winter? Uh, very likely some of my big hives that were honey production hives this year. We can go take a look at some of them. Mm -hmm. Um, I, I need to add a couple supers on because some I looked in one yesterday and it was storing, it was drawing comb on buckwheat and and uh, making buckwheat honey. So I want to get some of that if I can. Mm. But the big hives, I may get some fall honey from if the flow is good. Uh, are the they little not, ones. Are I they just, not here? Sorry. No, I've got I've got some other hives. Oh, okay. Uh, short distance away. Okay. Let's go look at a big hive. Okay. This looks big, but yeah, let's go <laughs> look at a bigger one. <laughs> so what we're going to do with these guys is show you a big hive, first and foremost. But also, these girls have got enough girth that they are drawing out frames on the buckwheat flow. There's a small hive beetle. I don't like small hive beetle. That's an introduced pest from Africa. Oh. And they are a bad problem at this time of year. Because the queen works her way up? Queen stays in the bottom typically. Oh, in the bottom. Okay. Yeah, they like to have the brood near the door. Oh, that makes sense. Pollen, yeah. is, um, pollen is heavy. And they like to keep the pollen in the bottom. And they need a lot of pollen for brood rearing. So they generally will keep the brood near the door. That is brand new wax that they are drawing out without any feed from me because I have forgotten to feed them. Actually, I haven't forgotten. I've been busy. You mean the sugar water? Yeah, the sugar syrup. Sugar syrup? Yep, sugar mm -hmm. syrup. So they've not had any, any help from me and they're drawing that out on buckwheat. So I'm going to take this feeder out, give them two empty frames to replace it mm -hmm. and then give them a honey super these What's, guys are done with their mite treatments the boxes um, are well the, the, the hives. hives i'm done with my my varroa mite treatments mm -hmm. so i'm going to put honey supers back on the big ones mm -hmm. and i'll just leave those on until fall and see if they make any fall honey for me okay see all the hive beetles under there <gasps> The bees corral them and keep them in one location. Um, strong hives can deal with them pretty well, mm -hmm. but they they just take resources to to deal with. the The beetles actually trick the bees into feeding them. Oh my goodness! They um they'll stroke the bees' mandibles and get a regurgitated nectar meal. Oh my. So I'm not much of a fan of hive beetles. There we go. Okay. And I think they've got enough girth. They're showing a lot of vigor. Vigor. And I'll put that on. Watch them pretty close over the next couple weeks to make sure I haven't given them too much space. Mm -hmm. If they don't have enough bees to protect this space and the beetles can really become a problem. Oh. Mm -hmm. okay. It really depends on rain this time of year. July, rain in July and August determines the fall flow. Is this typical of like we haven't had much rain at all? Yeah, we haven't had a lot uh, this year. We had quite a bit in um, May and June though. Yeah. And we've had some big rains. So I'm, I'm hoping there's enough in the water table that we'll get a fall flow. Mm -hmm. but. We'll see. 
Guys, I appreciate you watching. Please give me a like on this video, subscribe to my channel. You can also go to my website, duckriverhoney.com and sign up for my newsletter. I have had a great time having Kay here and sharing this with her. Um, we'll be talking to her about getting some bees. I don't know if she wants to or not, <laughs> but, um, but we'll, we'll be talking about that. You have anything to say? Uh, yeah, just uh, if you haven't uh, seen my channel before, go over to Kay Cottrell Late Bloomer. Uh, it's a basically gardening. I'm building a sustainable homestead in Tennessee, and you might find something of interest there if, if that's what you're into. So thanks so much. All right, guys. Appreciate it.